Well, two mines in Rustenburg resumed operations today, and this after suspending operations last week as a precaution against labor unrest sweeping through the region's platinum mines. The situation on the ground remains intense, and that despite police launching a crackdown over the weekend to disarm and end five weeks of labor unrest. For more, we chat now to reporter Tomisho Makaniere, who's at Marikana at this stage. Uh, Tomisho, thanks so much for joining us on the line. Let's start off with what exactly is happening on the ground right now. Thanks, Alicia. Well, at the moment, they're actually not letting any media come through onto the mine prem premises. Um, they still have a lot of uh, police presence, but this time they've got the South African Defence Force, uh, helicopters, they've got, you know, barricades, and no media is allowed on site. Um, it is quite, you know, very tense. So the only difference now is whereas, you know, over the last few weeks, you would have seen miners walking around still, you know, armed one or two there. Now, today, there's actually nothing like that. You can't see a single miner that is walking around with, with any sort of weapon on them. So it is still very, very tense, though. Is there any sign, uh, you know, that we're any closer to some kind of resolution, something being put on the table that workers would be a little bit more amenable to? Well, at the moment, um, we have been in contact with some of the uh, the miners at the moment they have actually gone through to the municipalities and the traffic departments and they are requesting for a permit in order to go ahead and and not strike but legally so you know they don't feel like they've taken it too far and uh, they still do feel that you know that the mining companies should be giving them some sort of respect uh, just the same as they feel like they have at the moment, they say that they're not going to be backing down. They're still going to be striking and that, uh, you know, the, the South African economy cannot do without the mining sector. So it's not a case that, you know, the mines will close down. Uh, there are always other provinces, uh, so they say, and that they do have the skills that the, that the mining sector needs. Is there any fear by these uh, striking miners that this entire plan and strategy might well backfire and uh, a miner like Lonman would have to shut down its operations entirely? Well, you know, they're also firm in, in what they believe in at the moment. They don't actually see the mines closing down anytime soon. What they're saying is that there are just too many people making money out of the mining sector at the moment. So, you know, they say that although people and the, they understand that the economy is taking a quite, quite a beating every single day, they're saying, you know, mining sector is pivotal and they're not going to be shutting down mines and they don't feel like they're taking this uh, very far at all. Tamisha, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us on the line. Uh, joining us now at the desk is Corbis now from Stand Up so we can unpack the situation further. Corbis, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, as uh, Tamisha says, there's uh, you know, no fear that uh, the mining operation, specifically at Lonman, would be uh, you know, brought to a halt indefinitely. Should that be a reality they should yeah. probably be waking up to right now? Yeah, look, the reality is they, they can't go on um, forever um, under the current sort of status quo. And, um, you know, one, one sort of almost, it seems like that, that there would be more stricter kind of timelines put out, I would argue, maybe throughout this week. Obviously, we've heard of Amplats now saying they're going to sort of restart the operations again um, tonight, I believe, and, and, and sort of the, 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 the no work and they will pay the people will basically last till tonight, then effectively. And then, you know, come tomorrow, they will probably assess and, and, and see what is what is sort of the numbers at their different shafts and then basically make a call from there. But I mean, you know, you, if you look at a couple of these mining operations and shafts in this Rustenburg area, there's definitely a couple of them that are at risk, you know, if they, if they can't come to some sort of agreement in terms of, of, of realistic wage demands, um, you know, there is a risk that, that jobs may be shared. Kurbus, it's Lindsay in Cape Town. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Lon Minutes says here announced, uh, well, it's uh, announced on SENS about an hour ago now. It says that as a result of the ongoing illegal strike at its Marikana operations and following the updated guidance the company gave in regulatory announcements, etc., it now expects sales for the full year to be in the range of between 685 and 700,000 ounces and also the guidance of an 8.5% increase in unit cost for the full year to be exceeded. So a downgrade in production, an up scale in costs and uh, that's obviously going to continue until there's a resolution I would have thought and we can expect worse but how much of this is in the price of these platinum stocks at the moment do you think yeah look and I guess they benefit also by still tapping some refined metal out of their processing facilities um, maybe since the period that the, the strike actually started to go through and they were also able to sell that metal off without effectively being paying um, labor cost um, from a mining perspective you know so 
you know, that, that may be something that would have given them, you know, maybe a, a better volume outcome towards the end of the year than one would have expected otherwise, um, which obviously also will, will aid in terms of their debt covenants that they may be very close and, and, and breaching coming the end of September. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, fundamentally, you know, the company, um, you know, got to be in a position where it can assess the longer term dem demand fundamentals and then invest accordingly, you know, um, on those demand fundamentals and, and hopefully through that trying to bring them down the relative cost curve. You know, ultimately, if, if a company can do those type of things, it, it, it actually puts it in a position where it can make a positive economic value for its shareholders and therefore, you know, one can sort of start seeing some value. Now, up to now, it's pretty un 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 unclear. You know, um, the market sort of expects a rights issue from Lonman. It's not sure how big it will be and what will be their strategy once they have done that rights issue. You know, will they then be chasing sort of the so-called nameplate capacity of about 950,000 ounces if they really believe in the assets and they believe they can take themselves down the cost curve? Or will this just something, you know, be a smaller amount, close to $400 million, that sort of will be used in the interim sort of to, um, to fund operations. Mm -hmm. Just chatting to members of the investment community out there, what, what, what's the sentiment like? I mean, we've been chatting to some traders at the desk and they're saying that this could possibly be scaring investors away in a very big way to the extent that they won't be coming back. Yeah, and I look, I, and I think if you just purely look at this, the share price, relative share price uh, movements, even of some of our gold companies, which got very concentrated at South African assets, you know, underperforming those that doesn't have that, you know, mm -hmm. and obviously in the platinum side, all of them is pretty much concentrated in South Africa. But, you know, no, no doubt about it, they, they, you know, there's some scores left of, of what's happened, you know, over the last couple of weeks. And I, I guess underlying the labor instability and the risk around how will this situation play out in the end of the day. You know, if you look at the cake and how it's cut relative to different stakeholders and who benefit from the company, you know, can there be a shift on that away from shareholders more towards employees, community spending, you know, all the rest. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess those are the uncertainties which uh, shareholders are, are battling with. Kubis, just to broaden this uh, argument to, or rather discussion to other commodities and, and the bigger complex, and something caught my eye uh, this morning. It's the second time he said this. This is the Resources Minister from Australia. His name's Martin Ferguson. He was speaking from, from the capital, Canberra, and he says that the global boom in commodity prices is over, and Australia, and presumably that means South Africa as well, must improve productivity in order to remain competitive. He says the following, the easy earnings we get out of high prices are now gone. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Because he seems to be seems to be a bit behind the times because there's been a there's been a resurgence in commodity prices yeah. recently. Of course, yeah. look, I, I think going forward, no doubt about it. You know, when you when you look at companies, it's about stock picking. You know, and the resources space. When you're in a bull market, you know your tier one, tier two, tier three assets. You know, they all benefit in some or other way. And sometimes your your poorer quality assets actually do better because you've got s such a strong demand uh, market in general. But when things get tighter and things normalize. And I guess that's the uncertainty with regards to more normalized demand that we'll likely see out of China in terms of commodities, uh, in particular on the, on the broader spectrum. You know, those type of, 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 of questions is important to ask when you look at these companies and, and, and sort of to be able to say, like I said, maybe the easy money is off the table, you know. From here on, it's gonna cost discipline. It's really, you gotta be able to compete with the best in the world to be able to drive your investment case and add economic value in any of the day of sh to shell this. And, 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 and I mean, you, you, you know, in today's world and what we see playing out, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a space where you gotta differentiate yourself. So you've gotta be ask the question then, you know, where Lonman says it's promising a new approach, can it really say that, it, can it afford to go down a, a new route uh, entirely? I mean, it's easy money off the table. Can it afford to actually put more than it has on the table right now? That's the thing, you know, and I think they've been clear about that, you know, the so-called 12,500 rand that the miners are asking, um, you know, they've, they've sort of come out and said it's, 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 it's not economically su supportive mm -hmm. for their business model. And, and, and my understanding is there will be, you know, jobs at, at risk at, at those type of levels, you know. So, so they've been vocal about that. And, you know, one can understand that if you look at the numbers on Excel, you know, when you add these type of increases to your, you know, to your numbers, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a great outlook, you know. So, and I guess at the moment also where demand for platinum 
has been has been has been struggling and you know it's been hampered by substitution by secondary supply out of the recycling market all these other type of of pressures on the on the, on the sector you know it's you, you don't have a lot of margin to play with at the moment I know you're not a short-term person, and nor should you be, but you can't help but have a look at the short-term movement that we saw on Friday. Big, big volumes on the JSE. We were talking to our markets commentator earlier on, and we were sort of trying to work out whether this was the real thing or this was just a blip. But there seemed to be uh, suddenly either a massive amount of short covering or uh, some new money coming into the gold and the platinum and the resources sector of the JSE, and maybe a bit of both. What is your gut feeling? I agree with you. I think there was uh, definitely some sector rotation. A lot of people benefiting for some time now of, of being overweight on the industrial side and gained on that and the question is always to when, when you sort of shift over to the re resources side um, but but I guess ultimately Lindsay you know it, it again it speaks towards these longer term trends and demand trends you know and, and, and costs you know um, unfortunately you know the last couple of numbers that we've seen coming out of many of these miners has been poor you know and it includes the the, 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 diverse, the big diversified miners like Anglo-American, BHP, Billiton and some of their disciplines. And, you know, you got to ask the question ultimately, how strong is demand from here on? You know, liquidity does wonders to commodity prices and sometimes to share prices, but it can be a short to medium term story playing out. And, and I guess more importantly, it's, it's, it's being able to assess at this point of saying what is sustainably the demand levels that one can sort of foresee in the next couple of years and then be able to, to sort of draw conclusion in terms of valuations on these shares. Well, let's leave it there, Corbis. Thanks so much for your sure. insights this afternoon. Corbis Nell is a mining analyst over at Standard.